back stretch. Kanan's on the outside. Look at Hornish. The adjustments that this team has made manually on this race car throughout this 400 mile race are starting to finally really pay some dividends. Look out, Schechter started to drift up. Oh, just one movement causes consequences for somebody else. But Hornish, as you mentioned, Marty, seems like he's got a fast car. Goes to try to get to the middle groove right now. Pushes Kanan high. I'm just still amazed that Sam Hornish had the presence of mind to call for a change, a mechanical change on the car from the cockpit. Supposed to show you just how much he's thinking about what's going on with his race car as he's out there driving at 215 miles an hour. an eye up front where you're saying wait a minute where's scott dixon well he's dropped back he's following marco andretti right now as uh, dixon has uh, dropped into the ninth position marco's eighth danica patrick's moved back up to seventh i mean it's like every two laps you sort of flip-flop about two three four positions and you have to be aggressive when it's group racing like this if you want to be able to pass and right now dixon just seems to be having a problem finding momentum to get past the cars in front jack Aroot, you have more yeah it's been interesting scott talking with my callers the tactician for scott dixon i asked him i said is it a case of momentum is he you know is there a problem he said, no, we really talked about the fact that we want to be in a position to race for the last 50 miles. As soon as the radar cleared, you saw the aggressiveness go out of the target ship Ganassi number nine, and they seem to be satisfied to just cruise and watch until we get to that magic 350-mile mark. Well, I'll tell you what, what's been fun is the fact we've had 14 lead changes, six different leaders, and this one is far from over yet, guys, as we're working uh, lap 129 of 200. And one guy you know is not going to sit back and wait because he usually is not a patient driver. Thomas Schechter in the two machine, who right now is sitting in second, just went past Frankiti, has his sights set on Weldon directly up ahead. And you can see if the race ended at this moment, the points lead would go back to the plus side again for Dario Frankiti as he would pick up points on second place Scott Dixon. But we're still, like I said, a long way from this one being over. In fact, Dario right now has got his hands full with Thomas Schechter right underneath him. That's a battle for second. Weldon's out in front. And remember, folks, Weldon did not look that good in practice, did not qualify that well. But that's the thing about this racetrack. You never know. If you find that balance, bam, you're right up front. And that's when your car just seems to go through the turn without any effort of making the car turn by the steering wheel itself. And we saw Danica Pat go from the low line to the high line right there. Looks like she's searching cars down below the white line. You see Dixon right now carrying momentum. Now, if you get pushed below the white line as he did right there, that is not a penalty. If you carry momentum and pass down below the white line to pass a car, then yes, that is a penalty. But right now, there's no doubt there's a lot of weaving and dicing going on right now, all at 215, 218 miles an hour. Scott Dixon, you saw him duking it out with Sam Hornish. That was for fifth. Dixon had it at the stripe. How long he'll hold on to it is anybody's guess. Meanwhile, let's go three wide for the race lead down the back stretch. You've got Welton, Schechter, Frankiti, and we're going to do this all the way into three. Hang on. Schechter decides to tuck in behind Dan Weldon, and we're getting work. Jack Aroot, you've caught up with Darren Manning. Yeah, and you want to know how hard that impact was? Darren Manning, your knees did what? My, oh, my knees? Oh, yeah, they, uh, as I went backwards into the wall, they came back through and uh, wiped out the steering wheel, so I've got a couple of big gashes, and we got st they stapled me up with some metal staples, so at least AJ would be proud. i got some metal in my body now. But, no, it was a big shame for the ABC crew and all of the, uh, the fight racing. You know, we... Uh, we weren't so quick at the beginning of the run on new tyres, but uh, once everybody else's car started going off, mine just stayed real good. And uh, unfortunately, the cars in front, they weren't able to hold their line so much, and they kept crossing my bow. And uh, I was just really trying to trying to move my way right to the front on that long green flag run. And uh, I think Marco, no fault of his own, you know, he just crossed my bow and uh, just took all the air off. And I pushed and it got loose as I came back into the air, and that was it. Well, we're happy to see that you're okay. Look forward to seeing you in Kentucky. Yeah, cheers, Bob. Well, it's good to see him okay, but uh, a couple of gashes in his knee. That gives you an idea of the ferocity of the impact. Meanwhile, look at this battle up front. we got to make way here. We're going to go side by side, but Dario Franchitti, he led that lap, but here comes Dan Weldon right back. Will he lead the next one? You won't miss a thing. Weldon, remember, he, last three years, he's finished third, second, and third. Does he win this year? Stay with us. 
back here at Michigan. And while we were in side by side, Thomas Schechter went from being in the lead pack to being in the back of the lead pack to now being back up to third. Let's go back and show you what happened to him. Well, the group in front almost touch, and here you get an opportunity for Kanan to take a little bit of that momentum and go around the high side. But I think Kanan, oh, as Kanan's going on the high side, you see Schechter in the middle get the dirty air from the cars in front. And that's a moment, Marty, at about 215 miles an hour. But you know something? That is classic Michigan right there. And again, yeah, everybody, I hope you'll bear with us. Uh, the weather precluded us from having the helicopter up. Normally, we'd have six onboards right now, and we'd be showing you wheel to wheel. But uh, the, the ceiling is so low, we just can't get the helicopter high enough to get the signal. So uh, I'm hoping that the, the excitement from just watching these drivers from the outside has been uh, good enough because uh, there's nothing else we can do right now. Jack, you've got more on Thomas Schechter? Yeah, I just checked with David Cripps, the, the uh, uh, tactician for Thomas Schechter. As we've said so many times here in Michigan, driving here is like a giant flywheel. And what happened is all of a sudden he lost his momentum. But David Cripps sounds very, very confident right now. He says, we just want to be there for the last 20 miles. Let's go to Brienne. Jack, Danica Patrick is getting instructions from Kim Green, her race strategist, to work with teammate Dario Franchitti. She's been told to help push him around the top of the racetrack. When she was doing that earlier, that's when she lost momentum on her car. Nothing physically happened to the car. She simply lost momentum and dropped back to ninth. So we'll see if as she helps her teammate get around uh, Dan Weldon, whether or not she can hold herself up at the top of that pack. Well, right now, as uh, you've got uh, Katie on the outside trying to go three wide down the backstretch, and he doesn't need anybody's help because he's doing it on his own. Weldon down low. Look out, Schechter in the middle, and Schechter may have had to give it a little breath. You know, it's amazing because we've been watching these cars now for a couple of hours, and they seem like they're just going around side by side. But when you're inside the cockpit, the car's moving around. You're trying to hold it straight. Let's listen to this. that information coming in from the spotters and the team managers but what happens inside the cockpit as we see Kanan now trying the low line going underneath Schechter is that you get into traffic you start to turn the car the steering wheel gets light do you turn it more do you just leave it and have the car return to you all these feelings that drivers are going through each and every turn throughout here just like it's a normal day's drive down to the office well Danica has caught up to Dario Danica has gotten in lockstep with him we're going to find out if it's going to be able to push him to the lead because here they go as it is that right down low with Dan Weldon Dario and Danica on the high side and here comes Marco oh look out airport Frank Keaton's upside down Dixon is involved the wheels touched Weldon is involved airborne up here got up into the fence we got him coming down Copy that. Got you okay? Looks like Sam Hornish I'm... also involved, and right now, folks. Yeah, he got hit in the head. Think good thoughts. The Delphi Sorry, safety crew is we'll fix it. heading for Dario. And from this angle, obviously, we can't see a thing. We've seen Marco Andretti get airborne and go over this year, but not at the speed. Remember, we're laughing this type of impact that Dario had. Between 2.15 and 2.18. These cars are built just like a jet fighter. They are so strong. The roll bars in them themselves are very strong. You've seen this before where the cars go over, land on the roll bar. Once they right the car, the driver just pops out, brushes himself off, and sometimes wishes he had a spare car to hop in to keep going. We saw a shot of Thomas Schechter. He had already pulled into pit lane, and there he is. And they are bringing Dario's car over. And they're going to try and bring it down very gently. These cars weigh 1,525 pounds. Sam Hornish is at the back of the car. And there's Dario taking the steering wheel off. will unbuckle his six-way harness. This is incredible. The integrity of the cockpit of this car. Guys, start breathing easy. Your guy's okay. 
You saw his team just a moment ago start to see him get out of the car. 